excited to make a movie with a lot of first timers, first time director of photography, and a lot of first time actors, myself, first time production. Why were you convinced? <laughs> um, just the quality of your, your script, it, it just uh, it was a lovely piece of writing, and I thought I had a, a original and um, insightful take on war, which was just really about the, the people. And I think there's been a lot of war films recently, brief war films that are kind of all about the pyrotechnics and the, the, the bigger picture. Um, people who suffer the most, which are the kind of the innocents, and um, I think there's this stuff going on all around the world just now where, where I think a lot of people and lives are being, are being kind of ruined, and it's all outside their world, you know, they have no idea what's going on other than that they're just trying to get on with their lives, and that's what these people were about, so I, yeah, I just a really, really good script, and then I felt that uh, Safe hands from me. Go ahead. There's an interesting uh, moment that we, we talk about a lot is your reaction when your children went shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Could you elaborate on this? Um, yeah, yeah. No, it was um, in the script when I see witness the death of my children, which was, uh, you know. Yeah, I um, you you wrote a scene in which I kind of I, I totally broke down and um, and I said it's very sweet of you to mention this because because it's kind of uh, it's aggrandizing to me. But I, I said that I maybe it was because I didn't want to play it, but I don't think it was. It was because um, uh, I thought it sustained better if if it wasn't that and um, with a little like sort of research about trauma and witnessing that. I, it wouldn't all happen then in that scene, and uh, and to kind of try and sustain it because I think it holds you and gives you momentum for the rest of the film. Something is being held in in uh, uh, that needs to be released that isn't released as you try and compute what's happened, um, and that's set up very well with uh, with kind of my my nemesis in, in the story. Um, and then you have this moment later on, we talked about it, and, and, and you know, it's a compliment to me, you, because you you were very open to that, and you were open to the change, and we found a different moment in the, the film where kind of the, the emotion gets um, released, as it were, and, uh, and that felt part of the process of this film, and it is honestly one of the lovely reasons why, why you're drawn to independent uh, you know, film is because uh, you know it's much more swift of foot. You have to kind of shoot four, five, six pages a day. You, you're you're busy and it's cooperative, and you're not spending endless time waiting for a DP to be a genius, which is fantastic, you know, and, and that's all wonderful too. But as a, being selfish as an actor, you just want to be busy, and this felt busy, and it was a a, a wonderful ensemble, honestly. Uh, I'll stop in a minute, but every actor you see on stage, you know, they had to be there most days for a lot of what we did, and, and they were being underused in lots of ways, um, and they were incredibly supportive, they were a genuinely um, lovely group of uh, actors to work with, um, as was all the crew and yourself. Thank you. Um, also, Mr. David Calder. You worked on so many pictures as well, and yet you decided to be very generous with your time on this picture. What attracted you? Well, it, in some ways, Ian's already said it. I, I, I was attracted to this because of the way the story was told. I, I think the whole idea of, uh, 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 as Ian was saying, about it's not just a war film, obviously, it's an anti war film, for one thing. Um, and concentrating on the consequences of armies in uniforms moving across countries and leaving the damage and the destruction which they do. Um, it's a very telling film f for me at this precise moment in time, I think, and not just for, me, but for other people. So, I mean, it was a story worth telling. That's what I would say about it. And. Uh, and again, what was consequential of it in the telling of the film was the introduction of 
and the applauding of so many young actors um, of superb talent. So that's why I like doing it. Thank you. Now we have half an hour. Also, maybe in this direction, the Albert, um, we're both in the same country, uh, Belgium, <laughs> and uh, we play this morally conceived kind of um, German officer. How do we feel in the field? Well, it, was, it was interesting as well because you always get the bad guys, and then I think Schultz, um, the character I played, is, um, is interesting in the sense that he didn't feel like he was necessarily on board with everything they were doing and so I thought I liked I liked the chance to play sort of the the witnessing person from the side of the, the people who were bringing the devastation um, so, so that's what I really liked about the character I was playing and um, apart from that I think it was really nice to see you put on a such an international production in um, in Belgium and and work with you know a team that is in, in many ways, a bit like a, a small family there. You know, there, there's a lot of productions in Belgium. But we're quite close. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a small group of people in the end, and it was interesting to see how it all blended in nicely. And I think, you know, you're so generous with everyone as well, and, and open to advice. And it really just felt like everyone was out there to make the best possible. And it, it, that was that was quite a nice experience. Thanks. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm uh, Sam. You play this lovely. So the first picture for you. Well, we're not the couple. <laughs> <laughs> so I know. I know. <laughs> we, we play a different couple. Yeah. Uh, you got it. Um, yeah, no, it, just like Leanne said, it was a very magical Belgian experience. Because um, I remember a lot of the crew was Belgian and um, they were all like, whoa, we haven't seen such things uh, in Belgium. We all feel like it's a bit crazy that this is happening because we all know that it took a while to get this story up and rolling. Um, and no, it was really special and, and um, I felt literally like a supporting role and then supporting an ensemble and something that we were creating together and that was also magical because we could observe um, very great actors and at the same time be telling the story and be part of it. So. It was very um, uplifting. Yeah, I think it was amazing. I think um, Henry is very much under Camille's thumb. Uh, um, but yeah, it was in incredible to shoot it. I think it's been eight years um, in the making for Julian and five in the making for us. So it was incredible just to get there and, and actually shoot it. And I think working with the likes of Ian and David, it's, it is really a masterclass of acting in a lot of ways and it was such a privilege to be able to work with them and uh, learn quite a lot as well. Thank you. Emma, you're studying drama now in <laughs> London. Could you just turn 19, please? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> it's February. Well, where, where are you going to? I'm a Toronto. All right. I'm a Toronto. 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 i am a wonderful um, atmosphere of, of care and, and help and uh, yeah I had a lot of scenes with Ian and it was so inspiring to just look at what you were doing but no really and, 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 and the small little tips that you gave me or that I took from you without <laughs> even asking uh, really helped me and, and it, it, it changed my acting forever. Lovely. Thank you. Emily Paul. <laughs> of course, you're a, uh, you're, yeah, I, I made a little switch around a couple of because you're a second accent. 
Since I've been here for three, about seven or seven. <laughs> um, how, would, how did it feel for you guys this year on this game? I mean, incredible. From start to finish, it was a gift. I think we also had a bit of a unique experience as well. So, actually, you know, it took a while to get running, but we all actually met like a year before we actually started. We tried pulling it off three times, didn't we? We did, exactly. <laughs> so, we all got to know each other and be friends and build a relationship before we actually got to that first day of set, which is so special. I mean, that doesn't really happen. And, you know, like everybody's been saying, they've been so collaborative and. The vibe on set was just full of care and love, and you know, we all learned a lot. And Ian, you were absolutely a joy to work oh, with, and you helped us with lots of things. So much, everybody, yeah. and you as well, Julian. The whole experience was just fantastic. Um, can I just start with saying thank you to everybody who made it here tonight? We have friends, family, and everybody else who came here. We're incredibly grateful that you. Watched the movie, we hoped you enjoyed it. Um, my character was a simple man <laughs> in ordinary world. Um, and it really is quite amazing being on set for four weeks with so many incredible people, um, incredible actors. Um, hats off again to Ian, David Calder, everyone else. Your experience brought so much to this movie and I think it really helped um, the rest of us really uh, pull through because it was sometimes complicated, some scenes were complicated, but having you there was an incredible support. And Julian, I know so it's, it's always hard to be last. It's always hard to be last because everything, you feel like everything's already been said, but it's been eight years in the making and we are all incredibly proud of you. Okay. Yes. We are also grateful by James Downey. The first movie. You also picked me a lot, a lot up when I was down. So. <laughs> Come to the job. How did it feel for you, man? Wow, goodness me. Um, it feels very surreal uh, being in the, the Soho Colors and in front of all of you tonight. Uh, thank you so much for coming uh, to start off. Um, God, I, I feel like I was a, a prepubescent teen when I booked this job. <laughs> and now I'm in my 30s, so that should give you some insight into what this journey's been like to uh, reach this point. Um, but no, you know, it, bringing this film to life didn't come without its challenges, but I think it's a testament to the tireless spirit of everyone involved um, that's got us this far. Um, I'd especially like to thank Julian for his, his incredible persistence in, in getting this film made. Um, he's the only reason why we're all standing in front of you tonight, So, um, and I think he should be very proud of himself for putting off such a beautiful film, uh, we know, when all odds were against him. So, um, round of applause to Julian. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to thank you for all the, the midnight phone calls that you picked up. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Kevin, shy as always. Hit me with a question. <laughs> you brought this Irish strength uh, in the character. Yeah, Fergal is written as Irish. It's not explicit on the screen, but he is written as Irish. It was very beautiful to be cast as an Irishman in this Belgian um, story. Uh, there were Irish in Belgium at the time I've researched. Uh, but yeah, just to, just not to take up too much time. It, it, it was it was it was it was a beautiful project to be involved in. I was cast in this in 2019. We shot it in 2022, and here we are in 2024. And if ever there's a lesson in determination and resistance, not just on the screen, um, it is this project, and I've learned a lot simply as a result of that. Um, it's a film about family, it's a film about community, it's a film about survival. Um, 
2019, my wife and I started for a baby. In 2022, my wife is pregnant with her baby, and here we are, I've got a two-year-old. Yeah. This stuff is about families everywhere, torn apart because of war, and it's very current. I hope it's got people thinking. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming. What's your next film? Fair <laughs> Pain. How I would remake Apocalypse Now, basically. Nice. Yes. nice. And I, um, I put it in the story of if two people would be able to move an immovable mountain and put their their differences aside to grow back together, all in this Apocalypse Now type setting. That takes to the my agent says it's too long. I got to cut fifty pages. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, yes. everyone. Uh, Ricardo Peter. Um, so, as I was um, watching the film, I didn't know if I would like it, but I would say that all of us, we was on the edge of our seats. So, I wrote down a few questions while I was watching the film. Um, so, what challenges have you as fellow actors had in making the film? And also, as well, what do you expect audience to take from the film? To so raise that question directly. No, that's to it. The whole cast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were the biggest challenges? Yeah, the, I, I, honestly, not not so many big challenges. I don't I don't think uh, it was very well uh, set up. The the um, all the sets were fantastic. I think we were all very comfortable. The kind of things that actors care about their costumes and the, you know the the whole look and feel of it. And we had enough time to shoot it. So honestly, it was it was really well managed um, all through. Uh, the farmstead was great. The city was fantastic. Church, all the woods. So, so it was really really well done. Um, you know, long long days, and uh, you know, the odd, the odd night shoot, and I think you know, emotionally wrought. I I never. It's always horrible playing those scenes. Really, really, and you kind of don't feel very glad when they're done. But um, no, we were a jolly band, and uh, and we enjoyed it. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too, too challenging. There was another part of the question, but I can't. Yeah, what do you expect audience to take from? I just, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that um, do people want to go and see a war film? I mean, it feels like it's such a fucking dysfunctional world in which we're living in just now. You know, maybe we want to fucking like comedy, but I do think that this is a, a film that has a different take on it. And it is worth seeing because uh, um, it kind of gives you a, a different perspective and a different insight, and I think it's very, very um, honest and uh, and gets to the, the heart of it. So um, I think, in a way, I, you know, there is something um, salutary or kind of redemptive about getting to understand a little bit what people go through because it's happening all over the fucking world and um and so i think it's a good thing for you know we we maybe live a different life and we're, we're in the majority please god um you know we, we we're not having to deal with these situations but i think it's important for us uh, for us to kind of understand a little bit more and uh, without having too many grand aspirations i think that's what the film is trying to put people in touch with things that other people are going through and thank god it's not us
as a child throughout the whole film, and that also puts me, like, I, I have so much to think about tonight, and it's a beautiful script. I guess my only question is, uh, maybe specifically to the end, but open for interpretation, because I think that's, that's the point. Um, at the very end, he does kill um, the lieutenant um, after his late wife tried to stop him from doing that in one of the earlier scenes. I was wondering what your take was, how that felt, because I, I tried to kind of read what's going on through his mind, and you know, for, it's probably complex in many ways. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, thank you for all the lovely uh, compliments about the film, and, and uh, I'm really glad you, you got that and you felt that, and that's kind of you know, that's that's great. And it's, and it's interesting you say that. I didn't I didn't feel particularly that that, that, that this uh, shadow of my wife was trying to stop me. I didn't feel that. I mean, funnily enough, we never really talked about it. She was a kind of she was just a she was a presence and she was an echo. And there was a time when. I remember we had this conversation in, in, in one of the, the, the shooting scenes inside the village when her sort of hand comes on yeah. there. So she only fucking hadn't been there. I might have shot it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was that literal. I don't know. But, and, and I think it's absolutely valid and good that you felt that. Um, uh, but uh, no, so, so, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, no, 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 yeah. not at all. And, and I think I, it, it could it could well be that, and you know, and it could be well be something different. It's like, you know, it's I think it's more to do with you know in these in these uh, the most I don't know poignant moments of your life, the most meaningful moments of life when you lose people or when you sort of you know at, at those moments. I, I think they do echo backwards, and, and you sort of. You know, he's obviously put very much in touch with the, the one that he who loved that that was part of that family, and so she's she's just present. She's present in, in his mind right from the word go, and so at these moments she kind of revisits, but it's not it's not kind of over Um It's uh, to me it's like one of my explorations with how those from the past haunting you, haunting um, you, and that's something. We, I mean, I, I, I try to implement in this movie. Also bring the link now that I was in you for writing a fan thing was based in the same film. It's, you know, it's like a limb mm -hmm. you've already cut off, but it's still haunting you, it's still there every day, you still feel it. Um, and I, I think um, to me the way that you that Leonard the farmer has been unable to process his grief, um, which he doesn't really tend to acknowledge is that she's everywhere. She, she part she the best of her is still within him. Yeah, just, just going off um, your comment about it being a different take on a, on a war film, I found that father-son relationship um, very refreshing in terms of the commander watching his son mm. carry out those massacres. And I mean, what was the inspiration for that story in particular? Um, I thought it was interesting to work in a quadrant. Uh, so you have father-son, father-son. So the, um, the son of Ian uh, slaps the, the son of Henry. So it's uh, so you have a father son father son dynamic, and the son, the one side kills the other the son, and he the father kills the son, but the father of the other side. So he's pushed by you know a father without a son, and a son without a father. And I thought that was interesting. But the overall thing is that it, you know it's a personalization that I think the film yeah. does really very well. That you, you're kind of not removed from the events. That everything is personalized. Everything is <coughs> internal. So even the dynamic within is something it, 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 it tells you. I think you know without again being too pretentious about a kind of German psychology at that time. You know, in it, you, how, how could you how could you possibly try and in, in capture what 
you know, the ways of war and what one, you know, how you might feel in the moment. I did think that the first time watching this, you know, for those moments of, you know, when, when you're facing death or you're, you're inflicting death, uh, you know, um, it makes people behave in fucked up ways and, and you know, just, 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 just it being there and, and that's kind of, in a way, just the personalization and, and bringing it to a family dynamic you hope resonates outwards that it sort of says whatever he's feeling about his son the way he what the son feels about how he needs to be in a war situation it kind of it tells you a bigger picture it's about and it's right happening right yeah, now in yeah. the world today because people just, just think say, I, I had no idea that was going to be in this film i did come here thinking it was a war film yeah i think that's a really big amazing thing yeah. itself because it's, it's a whole different film yeah, yeah it's why i didn't find it <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. We're still going to be. Can I ask one pretty quick question? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Is that okay? Um, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, there's an enormous tension throughout the entire film. Ominous. Um, uh, ominous tension. Well, tension. Um, and it's carried right the way through the film. It's a very hard thing to sustain, Snake. I imagine. And there's an enormous, an enormous amount of turmoil inside every character. And everyone's going through their different inner tensions and battles. I was, just wondering, I was just wondering from a preparation point of view, from the actor's point of view, whether everyone turned up for their own preparation on set or whether you had time together beforehand to, to work on those relationships that were going to fall, or if that just came naturally in the moment. Um, well, so everybody knew each other for five years when we started uh, shooting the movie so they had a lot of time to work on their relationships and, and stuff but what I, I, I noticed and I'm just speaking for everybody I'm just generalizing strangers and you can just say hi to them while we're at the bar um, I felt like they kind of threw their preparations in, in the bin when we were on the shoot and we just it just came from the heart and I think um, yeah I think that's interesting we prepare for so long that all your notes and then the moment the camera's roll, you just throw everything away, <coughs> but in heart. Um, unfortunately, I'm afraid that we might have to redirect ourselves to the bar. Oh. Um, oh. But there is still one question from this gentleman. Let's take it. Yes, at this point, um, uh, there was lots of tension, and uh, I think it was the soundtrack, uh, the, the score. It was yeah. so powerful, but it wasn't musical. So whose idea was that uh, clever, loud noises? Um, yeah, well, we had uh, we had like three soundtracks on this movie, um, and we didn't want to go with this classical, you know, like John Williams type of score where you've got everything and you've got the full orchestra. Um, it was more I, I I wanted to. I always told my musician, you got to think of this as a '90s retro thriller. Don't look at it as a war movie. Think as if. It's a thriller taking place in the 90s, you know, like this movie, this whole kind of stuff. Um, and so he used, he didn't use modern elements, he used uh, his sample list, were only elements that existed during the 90s. So that was very interesting. So he, he was very limited in his tools. Everything that was able, that was, uh, that he used to make the soundtrack was not created after the 2000s, if that makes sense. And I just wanted that specific. I, I just wanted that specific vibe to it. Yeah, it's on Spotify. Yeah, it's on Spotify. It's cool. <laughs> Listen to your journey on. All right. Um, Thank you for supporting the film. Thank you. Thank you.